Here you have a gas, fixed mass of gas, good to know. Ideal gas, two, have volume V, pressure P, temperature T. But then there is a change to this gas. You see from the left, change state to another one on the right. So the constant thing here is pressure. But the volume and temperature is changing. Now this one is a throwback to what we call Charles Law. So remember Charles Law? Volume, temperature is changing, pressure is constant. Good to know. Okay. Determine the amount of gas. When you see amount of gas, it's probably referring to moles. Double check the unit down behind me. Oh, on top of my head, right here. When you see moles, it's talking about amount of substance. So you need to find N. Moles is usually the symbol we use, N. So you think of the equations. The one that we see N is PV equals to NRT. So we're going to plug in everything in here to find our N value. So I'm going to rearrange. So PV over RT. Pressure, I mean, you could choose this state lah because we know most information about it. You can't choose this one on the right because we don't know temperature, so we can't find our moles. So let's do this first. 3 times 10 to the 5 times volume, which is 210 oh, centimeter cube. Be careful. You need to convert that to meter cube, which should be times 10 to the negative 6 meter cube. R is 8.31, T is... 270. So that will give you or give me a value of n which is about 0 0.0281. I like to keep more decimals because maybe later I might need to use it. But on the final answer line, I think I can put 0 0.28 just 2SF. You know why? Because all the things I use to calculate are it's about 2SF. Okay, this one maybe 1SF or oh, 3.0. Sorry, 2SF, 2SF, 2SF. Okay, la, I can do 2SF as my final answer, but I'm going to keep my. 3SF answer, just in case. Hmm. 3 marks for this. Final answer, equation, and correct substitution of values into the equation. Next. The final temperature of the gas. How are we going to find the final temperature of the gas? You could use ratio of Charles Law, because pressure is constant. Ma. Pressure and moles are constant. But I will show you also another method where you just plug in everything into PVNRT again. So you can either use ratio method or this method, which is a little bit longer i guess so what you gotta do is plug in the pressure which will be 3 times 10 to the 5 no change ma but volume now is different now volume has become smaller so 140 times 10 to negative 6 moles Ooh, we should use 0 0.0281 ratio would be a bit more accurate because you know ratio you assume the moles are the same uh and then r 8.31 times t so the T here, will you get about 179.86 kelvins. Maybe a little bit different if you use different values, but generally 180. Now let me show you the shortcut and how much shorter it is. But first, let me show you the marks. Lah. Two marks, oh. final answer and I guess correct equation. No. But if you want to use ratio, oh, ooh, best to know both methods. Here, oh, when you look at PV and RT, which ones are constants? Pressure is constant. Hmm. N is constant, same amount of gas. There are no leaking gas. R is a constant. So it's just V and T, which means I can say, huh, V over T equals to constant. So no matter what volume change there is, temperature should be able to do a ratio. So what I can do is, uh, since I know it's constant, so V1, T1 equals to V2, T2. And I can do something like this. So volume, 210 centimeter cube over temperature, 270K. Second volume, 140 over T2. Then I find T2, lo, ratio, done. Which method you want to do is really up to you. The nice thing about the ratio method is you don't, in case your mole is wrong, you calculate wrong, at least here you are still fine. Because you, don't, you only need V and T to calculate the ratio. So yep, two ways to do something. You can use both to check your answer during exam if you have time. Moving on, the external work done on the gas. Work done on gas, that's the W. You may think of first law of thermodynamics, which is delta U equals to Q plus W. But hang on a second, we don't know anything about U or Q. That is later. So no, we cannot use the equation. You need to remember from AS, if you have a constant pressure, you can use this equation, W equals to constant pressure times change in volume. Oh, okay, so this is what I recommend. 
You just plug in your constant value of pressure, which is 3 times 10 to the 5. Volume change, leh. you just take the bigger one minus the smallest one, no? 2, 1, 0, minus 1, 4, 0. You say, miss, but then go sign, no? negative or positive. Ah, that one, will later we worry about it. So this one will give you 21 joules. Now, is the volume getting bigger or smaller? If you look at this thing, you start off at 2, 1, 0, now to 1, 4, 0. So if I draw it out in terms of this piston, piston stuff, oh, maybe at first got a lot of volume here. Lah. Okay, these are all the gas inside here. Then after that, I compress the gas. Now the volume is much smaller here. So when I am compressing the gas, I'm doing work on the system, which means this should be a positive 21 joules. Now this park scheme, for some reason, doesn't particularly care about it, but it'll be helpful later when you're doing a calculation later. So A1 and C1 for your equation. Now, the final part, this is where the sign matters. This I put bracket lah. No sign is still okay lah. So for this change in volume and temperature, the thermal energy transferred, ooh, thermal energy transferred is Q, 53 joules. Determine U, the change in internal energy of the gas. My question is all, Q ah, should it be energy transferred into system or energy transferred out of system? How will we know? Let's write down the equation first. Q plus W. We know W is positive 21 because they're doing work on the gas, compressing it, therefore it's positive 21. But what is Q? Hmm. Here is where you need to look at the diagram very carefully. Here's some hints. You know there's a temperature change from 270K, ooh, change color halfway, change into a lower temperature, which is 170K. That is an important hint. So, you know that this delta U must be negative. Why negative? Because you are going from 270K to a lower 180 Kelvin. And also, FYI, in case you forgot, delta U is calculated by Delta U equals to what? 3 over 2 NKT. That's actually another method you can use to find the answer, but I recommend you learn how to use this one first. So you know Delta U have to be negative, AD. So you can't do this, 53 plus 21, that's not going to be a negative value. So you have to do negative 53 plus 21. Then only you'll get a negative value of internal energy, which is negative 32 joules. Another way you can think of it is this way. You start off, your, your pressure is the same, right? When you compress, shouldn't it get hotter? Your volume decrease, shouldn't it get hotter? But no, it gets colder. So that means there is heat removed from the system. So something like that. Lah. Put ice or whatever it is, as long as the heat goes out of the system. Negative Q. That's how we, another way we can think of this thing. So this one is three marks. Whoa. Three marks for this thing. If you put the first law thermodynamics equation, okay lao la. If you use the correct signs, substitute the correct values, you get another mark, and final answer is the final mark. Now, you may see inside the uh what you call that the the mark scheme, there's another method. I will show you that one as well. So we do know from kinetic theory that the change in internal energy is equal to this thing, change in temperature. You could use this method if you want to, but there is a lot more calculations to that. So 3 over 2, number of particles. Ah. You have to look at your moles. 0 0.0281, okay, must use 0 0.0281. Times the Avogadro constant, which is Na. Times the Boltman's constant, which is Kb times the temperature change, which is, ah, this one you took, take final minus initial. So 180 minus 270, you will also get uh, 32 joules. So a quick reminder that the, the Avogadro constant is 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23. Uh, and also the Boltzmann constant is 1.38 times 10 to the power of negative 23. So FYI, you can find this in your data formula sheet at the start of every single passive paper. I do have a comment on this though. Sometimes, there will be times where 
they the masking doesn't mention this method especially if you don't know the temperature directly and you don't know the moles so i will recommend you only use this method as a way to check your other method just to check the sign of you whether it should be negative or positive because uh, sometimes you don't have enough data to find it and sometimes the mark scheme doesn't mention it so they may not award you a mark for that so i recommend you whenever you see work done internal energy use this left side method but the right side method you can use to check the sign of your internal energy okay so yeah this is how you can think of this question a final thing i will add is when you are trying to decide the signs for this you the statement should be something like this you can say because mm, w, uh, q is more negative than who then w which is less positive hence the internal energy or change in internal energy must be negative because q is more negative ma w is less positive so it's not you see the you see you see this thing here 21 negative 53 oh, of course then you will be negative already long. so that's how you can think about the relationship between them and it really depends on each situation especially for a child's law you need to think very carefully of the signs cannot simply simply assign oh must be positive huh? oh must be negative no 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 use the temperature to help you decide what the sign of u is check maybe with this equation everything just to make sure you got the correct signs okay so that is all for this question i will see you in the next one